All right, folks, we're back live um, in Taiji, Japan with this pod of pan-tropical spotted dolphins in the cove. Um, a skiff just arrived with several trainers as well as crates on board. Um, these crates are used for captive selection when they take smaller spe species such as the pan-tropical spotted dolphins. Um, if you see that skiff over to the left with the blue tarps, um, those are the crates that they will use to take um, the dolphins they select for captivity. Um, while we were off the live stream for the past uh, 15 minutes or so, the dolphins were just swimming so, so tightly together, very panicked, very stressed. Um, they were just kind of piled one on top of the other. Um, they, sometimes they kind of stopped swimming in their circle and they'd bob with their heads going up vertically out of the water. Just have no idea what's going on. Pantropical spotted dolphins are typically found in the waters much further offshore and much deeper than what they're in right now. They're in very shallow water and surrounded by boats and nets and all kinds of foreign objects. These are wild animals that have likely never encountered many of these things before. There's also several young dolphins in this pod. Um, Pantropical spotted dolphins are named partially for the spots that they have on their body. They're not born with those spots, they get them when they're a little bit older. And there's a handful of smaller dolphins that still don't have their spots down there. You guys can see on the live stream where the dolphins are right now, they're just huddled so, so tightly together. Dolphins are extremely intelligent and extremely social animals. Um, they have extremely strong bonds with their family members and pod mates. And there are a few trainers down on the beach below us right now where the tarps are drawn. There's three skiffs that are kind of parked along the net there. Quite a bit of splashing every now and then as the dolphins kind of get frantic and panic. Um, we've also seen them kind of go vertical with their head down and their tail up out of the water as if they're trying to find somewhere to dive down to. Um, but the water is quite shallow. It's far more shallow than what they're accustomed to.
You guys can see just how they're continuing to huddle together. Just been swimming in a very, very tight circle for as long as they've been netted in this area. For those of you that have more recently joined us, um, if you guys can see that skiff or small boat with the blue tarps inside it, um, those blue tarps are lining crates, um, which they typically take captives in. Um, for smaller species like pantropical spotted dolphins, they typically put them in those type of crates rather than slings. Pantropical spotted dolphins are fairly small. Um, they kind of max out at about six to seven feet and a little over 200 pounds. In the wild, they can live as long as uh, about 40 to 50 years, according to NOAA or the National Oceanic and its Atmospheric Association or Administration of America. Um, oftentimes the lifespans of captive, captive cetaceans is far less um, than what we presume their lifespans to be in the wild. Um, the last time we saw them drive this species uh, was last month in January and at that time they only did a captive selection and they ended up releasing the remaining dolphins. Um, so we'll await to see what the fate of this pod is. Um, so far some trainers have arrived and it seems like they're making some preparations to do a captive selection. So we'll just wait to see what their fate is. There's uh, approaching engine noise outside of the cove here also. Sounds like there's another skiff coming this way. There's a lot of laughing and chattering coming from the trainers down there. Definitely a disconnect at the uh, complexity of the situation of what these wild dolphins are enduring. Dolphins are highly intelligent, highly social, extremely emotional, sentient, wide ranging, and deep diving wild animals. stress and harassment they endure simply from being chased to get this to this point is extreme and the stress of being separated from family members um, to be taken into captivity is also on an immeasurable scale there's another skiff approaching there this one's got some green crates um, for additional captives it seems like as well as more trainers pot is super super huddled together just kind of in the middle of that area right now just skiff pulling up right next to those dolphins
You guys can see just how close that skiff is getting to the pod. There's four skiffs total in that area where the dolphins are right now. Two of them have the crates um, for captive selection in them. These captive selection process um, can be quite drawn out and very uh, take quite a long time. Um, but just the length of time alone and the length that this live stream will be will just be an additional testimony to the length of time that these dolphins are suffering. We first sighted this formation close to 10 a.m. and it's close to 1 p.m. Um, local time right now. And they're starting to put that orange net across which traps the dolphins even closer to the beach down there where the trainers are. You guys can see how they put that net up. It seems very intentional that they're forcing the dolphins to go into the right hand corner where the trees are overgrown.
It's a very strategic way they place that orange net down there. Um, the hunters know that the trees are overgrown over on the one side and it seems that they've been using that to their advantage. Which makes it all the more important that we continue to expose this despite their efforts to hide what they're doing. Gonna keep both of our Facebook and Twitter streams in the best view here. A lot of chatter and clanging going on down below us. The pod of pantropical spotted dolphins has been forced into a very, very shallow area. Um, again, this is a, a species that is typically found in waters way far offshore, far, far deeper than what they're in right now. We've also sighted several very young dolphins in this group. Um, we can identify the younger ones both by their size and the pattern um, or their coloration on their body. Pantropical spotted dolphins are partially named for the spots that they have, but they don't get the spots until they're older, until they're um, more fully grown. Younger dolphins are not only smaller, but they do not have their spots yet. see that skiff down there still alongside the orange net preventing it from drifting out um, keeping that very small area um, confined to what's under the branches Where we're standing, we can see the dolphins surfacing um, just outside of the tarps over to the right hand side underneath the branches. Um, this is a fairly large pod. And we'll have an estimate when we are able to review our footage and photos a little later on.
And again, folks, the only reason why this is happening right now is because people are continuing to buy tickets to see dolphins in shows and to swim with them in captive settings, to do trainer for a day programs and other similar interaction programs. As long as there's a demand to see dolphins in such facilities, there's gonna be a demand for these hunts to continue. It's vital that we continue to expose this uh, incredibly cruel wild dolphin capture that's ultimately tied to the global captivity industry. And folks, please continue to go to that take action link. Um, it's pinned in the comments on our Facebook live stream and it's in the description of our Twitter live stream. There's a list of things that you guys can do from anywhere you are in the world, as well as a list of authorities to contact. Still several dolphins surfacing just outside of the tarps um, over to the right of the beach that we can see. It's very hard for you guys to see on our live stream due to how they've strategically placed the nuts today.
Seems like most of the activity is going on underneath the tarps right now. Um, the dolphin trainers seem to have a hold of several dolphins. We heard them um, shouting a little bit earlier. These trainers will assess um, the size and appearance and different features of these dolphins to determine which are the most desirable to put on display and ultimately profit off of. There's still a few Japanese activists with us again today. Um, some of them are up here on the lookout up above with us. There's a lot of laughing and chatter going on among the trainers, just as if it's another day of work for them. The dolphin trainers here in Taiji work alongside the hunters um, to do this, to capture wild dolphins and forever remove them from the marine ecosystem. So if you guys are just joining us, um, this is a part of Pantropical Spotted Dolphins and during a captive selection process. There's uh, several dolphins on the beach down below us it seems where their tarps are drawn. Dolphin trainers are down there with them, assessing and looking at different individual dolphins, deciding which ones they'll take for captivity. The money trail of these dolphin hunts ultimately lead to the captivity industry. Um, if people weren't buying tickets to see dolphin shows or to do trainer for a day programs or other swim with programs, then this would not be happening right now. They would not need to capture dolphins and profit off of them. And it's ultimately the live captured dolphins 
that sus financially sustained this entire operation. A live dolphin sells for far, far more than a dead dolphin does. So far we have not seen any skiffs leave yet. Seems that one with crates is down under the tarps, tarps right now. There's another skiff. Uh, the other skiff that had crates prepared is kind of idling um, underneath the branches over to the right hand side, which is probably not visible on the live stream. Um, Fortunately, today it seems that the hunters have very strategically set up the nets to confine the dolphins in an area just under the branches. In the past, um, where that skiff is parked right now against the net, the skiff, uh, the net went all the way up to the rocks over up towards the left. Um, but they've purposely set up the nets a little bit differently today, it seems. Um, they're fully aware of uh, what we do up here and how we live stream and document. They're aware of the limited visibility by the branches over to the right. So it seems that the hunters have purposely uh, set up the net to block off that one small section by the rocks. Captivity in and of itself is incredibly cruel for dolphins. Um, it's such a unique marine mammal that's wide-ranging, deep diving, highly intelligent, highly social, sentient, and self-aware. There's just simply no way to provide all of their needs in an artificial setting, such as a tank or a sea pen. Therefore, they inherently suffer. 
Additionally, in confinement, um, their ability to echolocate, or their biological sonar system, is rendered useless. There's another skiff that's kind of heading in closer to the tarps there. As part of uh, the high intelligence of dolphins, they're able to communicate with one another uh, of their own species through essentially a language of clicks and whistles. Some species have been documented to use what's called a signature whistle um, or something that a mother dolphin assigns to their baby. And that signature whistle is used in a similar way that we use names for each other. There's a lot of evidence that also points to the emotional sensitivity of dolphins. Many species have been documented mourning their dead, uh, mothers mourning their dead babies, or uh, pod members mourning a dead pod mate. These are incredibly complex animals and there's still a lot we don't know about them. Some people defend dolphin captivity and claim that um, there's research value in keeping dolphins captive. However, currently there's not much new research of value that can come out of uh, captivity. Current research that's done on captive dolphins is essentially husbandry research that's only used to further um, caretaking of dolphins in captivity. And captivity in and of itself is, of course, um, exploitive. The vast majority of dolphins in captivity are used for entertainment and used to be profited off of. There's still a huge amount of research that could be done on wild dolphins um, that's impossible to do in a captive setting. In a captive setting, there's no way to study migration routes, uh, feeding habits, hunting habits. Um, hunting habits that may be passed down and taught to offspring many behaviors and communication aspects that we can only study in the wild also. Um, the last time they got pantropical spotted dolphins in these drive hunts um, was in January, a couple weeks ago. And at that time, pantropical spotted dolphins were only subjected to captive selection. Um, it was an extremely long captive selection process and they ended up taking about half the pod for captivity. Um, they released the rest of them in that case. They did not slaughter them. But today we will wait to see what the fate of this entire pod is going to be. We have not seen any captives go yet, but there are two skiffs down there with crates ready to put captives in.
very ironically, there's um, some signs posted around this area where we are right now saying wildlife protection area. Unfortunately, that protection only seems to apply to what grows on the land. Um, the trees and branches that are in our view have more protection than the dolphins do. There's a lot of noise coming down uh, below the tarps right now. And uh, for those of you that have just joined us, they have very strategically placed the net here and parked a skiff there to block the, dr the net from drifting. They're confining the dolphins further into the area where the branches are growing and covering. Um, these attempts to hide the captive selection process make it all the more important that we continue to expose this incredibly cruel and inhumane practice of capturing wild dolphins for the captive entertainment industry. There's still part of the pod that's kind of swimming in a super tight circle, surfacing um, just to the right hand side edge of the cove area underneath the branches. At this point, we're waiting to see. Um, the captive selected dolphins come out from under the tarps. There's a number of dolphin trainers down there right at this very moment.
Recently, the hunters have taken uh, an excessive amount of precautions to cover what they're doing. Um, as you can see, they've put the net, instead of taking it to the rocks over towards the left there, they um, tied it off just so the edge of the net is peeking out from under the branches and the dolphins are confined under that area. They've also um, redone the tarps down below to make them tighter and put up even some additional ones. There's the sound of an engine. Um, sounds like there's some movement down below. There's a skiff coming out here. You've definitely got captives on board and the, bl the water looks uh, not clear. Oh yeah, that water in the crate is very red. four captives on that skiff. Um, there's two dolphins and two crates. The dolphins on the left-hand side crate were in water that was red. Let's see if we can get, can get a view of that on the live stream here. There's the skiff heading out of the cove, um, north towards the bay, or Moriura Bay. It's where there's a huge number of pens, sea pens, where they store many of these dolphins in after they're captured.
so that was the first skiff with captives that has come out. Um, so far, only four dolphins have been taken captive out of this quite large pod. Um, there's still another skiff with prepared crates that is down there right now. now after 1.30 p.m. here local time. We first sighted this formation about 10 a.m. It's likely that these dolphins were being chased and harassed before that as well by the hunters. The longer and longer this goes on, the more and more the dolphins are suffering. As incredibly social and emotional animals um, and highly intelligent animals, the trauma and cruelty involved in separating family members that they're so tightly bonded to is just something that's unimaginable. It's immeasurable. As we were mentioning, mentioning earlier, there's a lot of evidence um, suggesting how, just how emotionally complex dolphins are. Um, for one, parts, the parts of their brain that is connected to um, emotions is larger than our own, as some research suggests. Multiple species of dolphins have also been observed mourning their dead uh, mothers mourning their dead babies or dead uh, pod mates being more mourned by pod members and here comes another skiff with several more captives. And this one it looks like. Help me try to get some close up photos so I can get a proper count for you guys. There's at least eight captives in that skiff that just pulled out here. Um, and it appears to be heading for the harbor.
there's still a good number of dolphins that's just uh, swimming outside the tarps down there uh, that I can see through the branches right now. The captive selection process can be quite lengthy as the skiffs with crates go to the pens and then put the dolphins in and come back. It can be quite time consuming, um, but just the more this goes on, the more the remaining dolphins are suffering. And the length of this live stream is a testimony to that length of suffering as well. For those of you that have more recently joined us, um, this is a pod of pantropical spotted dolphins that is currently down on the cove below us. Um, there's several young dolphins in this group. Pantropical spotted dolphins are partially named for their spots, but they do not get those spots until they're older. And younger dolphins are identified by the, their lack of spots and their small size. Um, we've spotted several of those in this pod earlier as they were um, swimming around before the trainers came. The only reason why this is happening right now, folks, is because there is a demand for captive dolphins because people are paying to, paying to buy tickets to see dolphins in shows and aquariums and marine parks and to swim with them and swim with captive dolphins programs. So ultimately that demand that fuels this entire hunt in Taiji, Japan, a live dolphin sold to a marine park or an aquarium sells for far, far more than a dead dolphin sells for meat and at that, the demand for dolphin meat is extremely dismal on a national scale. And the reason why we're looking at trees right now is because the hunters have very strategically set up the net next to that boat right down there. Um, they're aware that we're up here. They're aware that the trees are growing on that side and have decided to use that to their advantage to hide what they do. This makes it all the more important that we continually expose this and the money trail of these hunts that ultimately leave, leads to marine parks and aquariums. Through continually exposing these hunts and the cruelty involved in them over the years, um, it has helped for South Korea to ban the importation of dolphins captured from Taiji. 
It's also helped JASA, or the Japanese Association of Zoos and Aquariums, ban its members or captive facilities within Japan to purchase the dolphins captured in Taiji. And with such an extremely high number of dolphinariums in Japan, that was a huge, huge step forward. Um, a handful of facilities have decided to give up their accreditation to continue purchasing the dolphins captured in these hunts. Um, the Taiji Whale Museum is one of those. Most, if not all, of the dolphins in the Taiji Whale Museum were acquired from this very hunt. Additionally, through exposing the cruelty of dolphin captivity itself, um, Dolphin Project's work, as well as the work of tireless grassroots, grassroots activists, helped Canada pass a historic anti-captivity law last year. This will ultimately save countless generations of dolphins and whales from lifetimes of suffering. And so it's up to people like us to continue exposing this extreme cruelty of wild captures as well as, well as the cruelty of captivity itself um, to continue making progress. The more people we can make aware of all this, the more people we can take action. Word of mouth and social media are incredibly powerful tools. Through sharing uh, images captured from these drive hunts, as well as footage, and footage from captivity depicting things like stereotypical behaviors and other evidence of suffering, help to make more people aware. The first step to igniting change is to making people aware. And folks, if you haven't already, please be sure to go to the Take Action link. Um, it's pinned in the comments of our Facebook live stream. And it's in the description of our Twitter live stream. There's a list of things that you guys can do from anywhere you are in the world. Um, as well as a list of authorities that we can continually contact and email and phone call. It's ultimately up to people like us to continue to change the tide on how the world sees dolphin captivity. Thus far, at least 12 dolphins have been taken out of this pod for captive exploitation. Both skiffs have uh, now departed. One has gone north to the bay and the other has gone to the harbor. There are a number of sea pens throughout um, Taiji and even in a neighboring town where these captured dolphins are stored. This captive selection process can be quite time consuming as those skiffs go to the sea pens and put the dolphins in and then come back with the emptied crates.
Seems like there's still a number of trainers down there underneath the tarps. There are a good number of dolphins remaining in the pod as well that continues to swim around just by the edge of the tarps down there. It's nearing 2 p.m. now, local time. Uh, we first sighted this drive at about 10 a.m., fairly late in the morning. The dolphins fought, fought very, very hard to get away from the hunters. Um, while they were being chased from the open ocean closer and closer to shore. They'd go on several deep dives at a time and surface at a distance, um, which caused the hunters to kind of break out of formation and chase after them and then get back, back in a line. Um, so they, it took quite a while for the dolphins to get from the open ocean into here. There are also a number of young dolphins that we've sighted in this group. Um, earlier when the pod was still all together, we saw some calves swimming next to what we presume to be their mothers. Sometimes dolphins form what's called a nursery pod or a group of dolphins that is made up primarily of mothers and their calves and other females. And the mothers and females will cooperatively raise their young. Um, one female will essentially babysit the calves as one of the mothers goes off to feed. And that's also another testimony to their intelligence. So at this point, we're waiting to see what the 
fate of the remaining pod is going to be. Two skiffs have left with captives so far. Um, there were at least 12 dolphins that have been taken captive so far. Those skiffs that have dropped them off um, have gone off. One went up to the bay and one went down to the harbor. It looks like the one that went up to the bay is starting to come back this way. Um, these captive selection processes are very, very drawn out sometimes. As the skiffs with captives goes off to the pens and drops them off and then comes all the way back, it takes quite a while. That length of time just adds on and on to the remaining dolphins suffering. A view of this skiff coming back. It's visible on our Twitter feed and our Facebook live stream. Um, on our Facebook, it's towards the top of your screen. Returning skiff is the one that took captives to the bay. We've got crates in there that are lined with a green tarp. The only reason why this operation is happening right now, this process of capturing wild dolphins, is because there's a demand to see dolphins in captivity, to see dolphin shows and to swim with them at different captive facilities. Um, if people weren't buying uh, tickets to participate in those things, then this would not be happening. There would be no need to capture dolphins from the wild. If you guys can see, it's quite challenging on the live stream, um, but this skiff is the one that had the red water. Seems that two of the crates now have that red water. And they've just gone under the branches now into the area which the hunters have strategic strategically um, done a lot of the activity today.
そうですね There's still a number of dolphins down there、uh, remaining. And right now we're waiting to see what their fate will be, whether more are going to be taken captive. There are still several trainers down on the beach below us. Try moving you over to this side. We're still waiting to see what the fate of this pod is going to be.、Um, so far, 12, at least 12 of them have been taken for captivity. And there's still a number of them remaining that are down below the tarps right now. There's still some trainers down there as well. One of the skiffs that has taken captives has returned and is down there right now. Tropical spotted dolphins are much more accustomed to deep water or offshore water. Right now, they're forced in a very, very shallow area. The species is capable of diving several hundreds of feet.、Um, that's just one condition that cannot be replicated in an artificial setting. Additionally, when they're taken for captivity, they're separated from their pod or their family group. As incredibly social, intelligent, and sentient animals, dolphins have a,、uh, very intense bonds with their family members and pod mates.
One of the many aspects of cruelty in this drive hunt process is the separation they endure when um, dolphins are chosen for captivity, they're separated from their pod. There were a number of young dolphins in this group also. Um, earlier when the pod was still swimming out by the second layer or the middle net, um, we saw several young dolphins. Pantropical spotted dolphins partially get their name from their spots, um, but they do not get those spots until they're older. Younger dolphins do not have those spots, um, and there were a number of unspotted small dolphins swimming alongside an adult, which is presumably their mother. The only reason why this is happening right now is because people are paying to see dolphins in captivity because there's money to be made there. A live dolphin captured in these drive hunts sells for far, far more than a dead dolphin sells for meat. And that that dolphin meat is in very, very low demand on a nationwide scale here in Japan. The demand for these hunts ultimately comes from the captivity industry. This capture process and the extreme cruelty involved in these drive hunts are what the captivity industry does not want us to see. Captivity in and of itself is very cruel for dolphins additionally. but it's vital for us to continue to expose this process of wild captures as well as the cruelty of captivity so that more and more people become aware and more and more people are able to take action. Please don't let the action stop um, on an individual level, um, please start a chain reaction within your family or community or in your classroom. If we educate other people and the other people want to take action with us, then they in turn can also educate their own families and communities and keep the process going. Um, it's up to people like us to ignite that change and to change the way the world sees dolphin captivity. If there's no demand for captive dolphin displays, um, such as dolphin shows, trainer for a day programs, and swim with programs, then there's no need for wild captures and there's no need for these hunts. The captures are what keep these hunts profitable.
The captive selection process of the drive hunts um, is often very, very drawn out, sometimes lasting several hours. It's currently a little after 2 p.m. local time. There's still a number of voices coming from underneath the tarps. There's definitely some activity going on down there. Um, there's still a number of dolphins that are down there with them as well. Sounds like there's some approaching engine noise and possibly another skiff returning. One of the skiffs that was down there um, with the green captive crates has gone back under the tarps. That skiff had taken uh, four captives up to the bay a little bit earlier. And as they left with dolphins, um, we could see red water in the crates, possibly from do the dolphins bleeding. Um, it's not uncommon for them to endure injuries amid this captive selection process. Pentropical spotted dolphins are a fairly small dolphin species. Um, they max out at six to seven feet in length um, and about 200 or 250 pounds in weight. For smaller dolphin species, um, we typically see captives being taken in crates that are inside of the skiff rather than slings. The slings are used for larger species um, like bottlenose or rhesus dolphins that can be uh, upwards of 10 feet or more. Okay, you can hear them underneath the tarp sound like they just lifted something very heavy.
Just another chance um, as they're lifting something. There's a boat that just passed outside of the cove. Um, it was a small fishing boat, which may have been the engine noise um, that you might have heard. All right, the skiff with crates is now coming back out. There are at least three captives on that skiff. Um, once we review all our photos and footage from today, we'll have a proper count a little later. And as that skiff was leaving, one of the trainers was uh, injecting something into that dolphin with a needle. And that skiff is also heading north for the bay again. And the one that went to the harbor is now pulling in. You can see the blue tarps in that one. So the first skiff that went out had four captives, the second skiff had at least 12, and this one that just went out had at least three. Or, I'm sorry, um, four in the first one, eight in the second one, putting us at 12, and then an additional three at least. Um, so we're at 15 captives or more possibly. Um, we'll have a proper count once we review our photos and footage.
some more chanting down there as if they're lifting things. So right now there's just one skiff with crates underneath the tarps right now. Um, sounds like there's still some trainers down there as well. So we'll wait to see uh, the fate of these remaining dolphins as their pod dwindles and dwindles as more and more captives are taken. Skiff coming out from underneath the tarps. Got more captives in there as well. There's one of them in there appears to be thrashing.
were several captives in that skiff also. Um, again, folks, we'll have a complete count once we're able to review all of our photos and footage. Alright folks, it seems like the hunters have left some. There's still some dolphins down there. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream once one more time and then go back live when they come back um, so we can see the fate of the re these remaining dolphins. Thank you so much for all of you that have stayed with us. Um, please make sure your notifications are on if you're on Facebook to be notified of when we go back live. Um, and please continue to follow us on Twitter um, for the continuation of this also.